sending the warmest greetings to our fellow Catholics. We are thrilled to welcome you back to our channel. We hope you enjoy this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay updated with the latest information. Join us on this journey and listen to this video until the very end. Type Amen if you believe, may God always bless you. Today, we celebrate and remember a holy saint of our church. On this sacred day, September 23rd, we honor the feast of Padre Pio, a mystic and visionary who lived in our modern times. Padre Pio was a vessel of divine gifts given to him by God extraordinary gifts that included the miraculous healing of the sick and the restoration of sight to the blind. His life was a witness to God's grace and the power of steadfast faith. On September 20, 1918, Padre Pio was in front of a large crucifix when he received the visible marks of the crucifixion, making him the first stigmatized in the history of the Church. The doctor who examined Padre Pio could not find any natural cause for the wounds. Upon his death in 1968, the wounds were no longer visible. In fact, there was no scarring, and the skin was completely renewed. He had predicted 50 years that upon his death, the wounds would heal. The wounds of the stigmata were not the only mystical phenomenon experienced by Padre Pio. The blood from the stigmata had an odor described by many as similar to that of perfume or flowers, and the gift of bilocation was attributed to him. Padre Pio had the ability to read the hearts of the penitents who came to him for confession, which he heard for 10 or 12 hours per day. Padre Pio used the confessional to bring both sinners and devout souls closer to God. He would know just the right word of counsel or encouragement that was needed. Even before his death, people spoke to Padre Pio about his possible canonization. He died on September 23, 1968, at the age of 81. His funeral was attended by about 100,000 people. Let me draw your attention to a profound and prophetic message in part by Saint Padre Pio, one of the revered saints in the history of Christianity. On the important date of February 7, 1950, Padre Pio, guided by divine inspiration, conveyed a warning of utmost seriousness to all of humanity. This warning transcended the limits of time, echoing through the ages, urging us to listen to its timeless wisdom. Take care of the creatures entrusted to your care during these appointed days. I, the creator and sustainer of both mankind and the animal kingdom, will give you early signs indicating the importance of preparing extra food for them. I am committed to preserving the belongings of the chosen, including the animals, as they too will need nourishment in the aftermath. Let no one leave their home, not even to feed the animals, those who disobey will face terrible consequences. Make sure a careful protection of your windows, my chosen ones will be spared from seeing the wrath of my judgment. Place your trust in me, and I will be your refuge, your trust obliges me to extend my help when you need it most. The moment of my arrival draws near, I will show mercy amidst a severe reckoning that will serve as a testament to the times. My angels, the instruments of this divine work, are ready with their sharpened swords, they are entrusted with the solemn duty of destroying all those who mocked me and ignored my divine revelations. Streams of fiery storm will fall from the heavens, covering the entire surface of the earth, stormy winds, adverse weather, thunderous noises, and seismic shocks will engulf the world for a span of two days, an unending flood of flames will follow, starting on an extremely cold night. Let it be known that these events unfold to highlight the sovereignty of God over all creation. That you may be prepared for these visitations, I will give you the following signs and instructions, the night will be very cold, the wind will howl. After a time, thunderbolts will be heard, 
Lock all the doors and windows, talk to no one outside the house. Kneel down before a crucifix, be sorry for your sins and ask for my mother's protection. Do not look during the earthquake because the anger of God is holy, Jesus does not want us to behold the anger of God because God's anger must be contemplated with fear and trembling, those who disregard this advice will be killed instantly. The wind will carry with it poisonous gases, which will be spread over the entire earth, those who suffer and die innocently will be martyrs, and they will be with me in my kingdom. Satan will triumph, but after three nights, the earthquake and fire will cease, on the following day, the sun will shine again, angels will descend from heaven and will spread the spirit of peace over the earth, a feeling of immeasurable gratitude will take possession of those who survive this terrible ordeal, the impending punishment with which God has visited the earth since creation. I have chosen souls in other countries may reach heaven soon. A more terrible catastrophe shall come upon the entire world, such as never before has been witnessed, a terrible chastisement never before experienced. The war of 1950 shall be the introduction to these things. How unconcerned men are regarding these things which shall so soon come upon them, contrary to all expectations, how indifferent they are in preparing themselves for these unheard of events through which they will have to pass so shortly. The sins of men have multiplied beyond measure, irreverence in the church, sinful pride committed in fake religious activities, lack of true brotherly love, indecency in dress, especially during summer seasons, the world is filled with iniquity. This catastrophe shall come upon the earth like a flash of lightning, at which moment the light of the morning sun shall be replaced by black darkness, no one shall leave the house or look out of a window from that moment on, I myself shall come amidst thunder and lightning, the wicked will behold my divine heart, there shall be great confusion because of this utter darkness in which the entire earth shall be enveloped, and many, many shall die from fear and despair. Those who shall fight for my cause shall receive grace from my divine heart, and the cry who is like unto God shall serve as a means of protection to many, however, many shall burn in the open fields like withered grass, the godless shall be annihilated so that afterward the just shall be able to stand afresh. This is the end of the imparted message. Throughout these difficult times, Saint Padre Pio also gave priceless advice to all. Padre Pio said, In times of darkness, holding the rosary is like holding our blessed mother's hand, and pray the rosary he said every day. Abandon yourselves in the hands of Mary, and she will take care of you. So, these are the words of Padre Pio. This is a habit that he certainly practiced himself throughout his life, and we must remember that his life was not an easy one. It was a turbulent life. In fact, he lived through two world wars and a devastating epidemic in which between 50, perhaps even 100 million people died. In that epidemic, after all of this, this was Padre Pio's advice. And when prayed in faith, the rosary can be a very powerful prayer that keeps us united both to Jesus and his mother Mary. Dear brothers and sisters, the timelessness of Padre Pio's warning serves as a strong reminder of the responsibilities we have as stewards of our faith and humanity. May we absorb the essence of his message, recognizing it as an eternal call to rise above the temporary and embrace the eternal. Through meditation and reflection, may we honor Saint Padre Pio's words, and may they guide us on our journey toward a deeper spiritual awakening and a stronger connection with the Divine. In conclusion, let us embrace these teachings of Padre Pio as a guide for navigating the dark times that may engulf us. May we find comfort in faith, strength in prayer, and purpose in acts of love. And may we, like Padre Pio, become the bearers of God's light in a world longing for hope and healing. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. 
What are your thoughts on today's topic? Please leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the bell button to receive notifications when there's a new video. May your moments of adoration before Christ's presence be filled with His grace and love. May you find solace and strength in His embrace. Amen.